Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about simple time series forecasting models. This is part of our lecture series on free cash flow estimation and forecasting as part of the larger goal of developing a full discounted cash flow valuation of a stock. So in the prior video, we gave a full overview on the whole forecasting process and all the considerations and pieces that go into that. So take a look at that first, if you haven't seen that already. Now we're getting into uh, the simple forecasting portion of the lecture series, where in this video, we're going to look at simple models we can use to forecast uh, time series, which are not very complex. So the first model that we're looking at here is the historical average model. Um, and basically all we're doing here is taking an average of the historical data and using that to predict the future. Um, so this is useful if uh, there's not a clear trend up or down in the data. It's kind of fairly constant, but it's moving up and down. Um, and you think that it basically reverts to the mean then this is a good approach to use. Um, and so it's just you know, taking each uh, end period in the historical data, um, summing them up, taking the average, um, and then using that average to predict all the future periods. So um, every, every future period is going to have the same value for its forecast. It's just all of it is at the average. Um, and this epsilon here just represents the error in the forecast that you're never going to be able to forecast things perfectly. Second model we're looking at is the recent value model. So this is even a little bit simpler than the historical average model. Here we're just taking whatever the most recent value was and assuming that it's gonna stay there in the future. Um, and we just use that same value for all the future periods. So this uh, is applicable in mostly the same settings as the historical average model. Uh, if the data does not have a defined uh, trend up or downward, um, then um, this can make sense, but in contrast to the historical average, this is where you think uh, whatever it was most recently is going to be a better estimate for where it's going to be in the future. In other words, there's not any kind of mean reversion in this data um, so that whatever we had is most recently is the best estimate. Then um, we're going to look here at two models which deal with when the data is going up or down over time. So the first is the trend model. Um, and so this is appropriate when it seems like it's linearly going up or down, like kind of a straight line uh, in the data. Whereas if it's kind of a curve, an exponential change, then you're going to want to use the growth model, uh, which we're going to look at next. Uh, but if it's linear, then uh, the trend model is the most appropriate. And so this is the first one where we actually have to do something other than a very simple calculation to actually fit it. Uh, what we have to do to fit this is run an OLS regression. Um, so still not very complicated, but certainly more than just using the last period. Um, so that regression, um, you would estimate it with a constant um, and the X or independent uh, variable there would be T, time, the number of periods. Um, and so it can be, you know, one for the first period, two for the second period, three for the third period, and so on. That's going to be the variable you're going to use as on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side as your Y or response or dependent variable. Um, you're going to use whatever you're trying to forecast. So you fit this uh, regression, and that's going to get you this coefficient on the time variable. And that's what we need to get out of this fitting process. 
So then in order to predict that into the future, uh, we then calculate uh, the, the fitted model by using that coefficient that we calculated from the historical, multiplying it by the time period, um, and adding the constant, which was estimated. So uh, if you had five historical periods, those might be one, two, three, four, five as t in your uh, regression. Then you want to forecast one period in the future. That's going to be period six. So you're going to plug in six for t here um, and the estimated uh, coefficient and intercept. Then you want to predict the next period. You're going to plug in seven. Period after that, you're going to plug in eight and so on. And this is able to capture a linear trend up or down in the data. What if that um, change over time going up or down is, is more of a curve exponential rather than uh, a straight line? Then we want to use the growth model or compounded annual growth model. Um, so what this says is basically we're calculating the per period growth rate in the historical data, and we're going to apply that growth rate going forward. So you can calculate the compounded annual growth rate, which is basically what growth rate would you have to have had in each period in order to have the growth over the full time period. Um, so... You do that by just taking your most recent value and dividing it by the earliest value that you have, um, taking all of that, taking it to the one over number of periods power. So that would be how many periods are in between that beginning of the historical data and the end of the historical data. Um, you raise that fraction of that power and then you subtract one and that's gonna get you the compounded annual growth rate or how much should the growth rate have been in each period to grow as much as it did over the uh, entire range of the historical data. So then once you have that CAGR uh, fitted, then you can predict the future using it. So uh, you know, we're just going to use the standard uh, like growth kind of formula, um, where you just take whatever the last period was, and you multiply by one plus the growth rate compounded at however many periods you want to forecast into the future. So if you're just forecasting one period into the future, it's just times one plus the growth rate. If you're going two periods in the future, it's times one plus the growth rate squared and so on. Um, so that's how you uh, calculate the CAGR model. So that's the four uh, different simple forecasting models that we're going to look at. And collectively, these four models are useful uh, whenever uh, the historical data is fairly simple. Now, if there are repeating historical patterns in the data, uh, maybe there's a spike uh, you know, over and over in the data, these models are not gonna be appropriate. That's where you need to go to the more complex models. But if it's, you know, just kind of staying around the same or it's just trending up or trending down, then these simple forecast models can work just fine. So that covers the simple forecast models. We're going to come back next time in the next uh, two videos to look at how we can carry this out in both Excel and Python. So thanks for listening and see you next time.